Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today, we've got another gun gripe episode for you. This one is a little bit of a doozy. and They're course, all doozies. They're all what are doozies. What about? I don't know what we're talking about, but they're all doozies. <laughs> and Chuck Schumer, of course, uh. is running his mouth about wanting to ban body armor. So we thought we'd take a moment to talk about body armor and uh, to talk about this. Now, this isn't new. I mean, every time there's some type of a tragedy, these folks always want to start running their mouths about banning whatever item was used. You know, if, if a guy had a med kit on him, they'd want to ban the med kit. I mean, body armor is one of the most passive ways that you can protect yourself. You don't even have to be armed to have body armor on to protect yourself against someone trying to shoot you or something like that. And he wants uh, for civilians not to have access to body armor, okay? says right here that he goes on to say that body armor has become part of a checklist for copycats, okay? And basically that he doesn't want anybody who doesn't have an occupational need to have body armor to have body armor. So what basically, mean? if you're not his bodyguard or the police or protecting the government or the military, you don't have any business having body armor. Well, I, don't think really, I don't think the government really needs body armor because, I mean, what happens if the, the people need to uprise, you know? Come on. It's all control, guys. It's all a bunch of hogwash. I mean, Thought there, there's no like actual bill that's been proposed yet that I can find. It's really just saber rattling at this point. Mm -hmm. But it just sets forth a really disturbing precedence when someone swears to defend and uphold the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, then you should be pro-gun. Like You shouldn't have a choice to decide, oh, well, I don't like guns when weapons and armor are part of the Second Amendment, right? You know, the, bil the ability to protect yourself, armor was a part of the term arms back in the day, armor and weapons. And it was the same armor and weapons that the military had at the time as well when the Second Amendment was adopted. So the purview there, or, or it's under the purview that the Second Amendment applies to the same armor and weapons that the military has access to. Well, the thing I know that's hard for people to, to grasp, but... We're being, you know, our rights are being trampled on. Left oh, and they're right. they're being trampled on all the time. I mean, and it's just even it's been getting worse over over the course of time. And now it's almost like come to a head. It's like every other week there's some, you know, politician who's spewing some nonsense about oh we need to ban this because of public safety. Blah blah public safety. All the so you're gonna ban body armor in the Give in the interest break. of public safety, <sighs> and then actually remove the things that make people feel safe and physically well, make people safe. Not only that, but you think about it, okay, gun-free zones. Let's go back to gun-free zones, okay? So, you got a gun-free zone, all right? Nobody's supposed to bring guns in there, right? But somebody decides to, they're, they're a criminal. They're breaking the law, right? Well, what means do you have of protecting yourself? You can't carry a gun in a gun-free zone, right? Body armor is a very passive way of defense, of protecting yourself in those situations. Why would anyone want to take that away? Oh, wait. Control. Oh, total control. I forgot the politicians want us to be just little peons. Settle, subjects. settle down, Ronald McDonald. Dude, well, look, y'all talking about... Y'all talking about gun gripes and stuff. This is a gripe. It is. It's just nonsense. Pure and absolute nonsense. And anyone who listens to Chuck Schumer, they just need to go crawl in a hole somewhere and just... Live out the, the yeah, just live out the rest of your life down there, just like that. That'd be perfectly fine with me. Okay. No sense. Sorry. No, Sorry. it's cool. Sorry. It's cool. So what we're doing in this video is we want to also show that, you know, there's all different types of armor. A lot of people, when they, when they think body armor, they think, you know, hard plates. They think, you know, they see the SWAT teams or military wearing a piece mm -hmm. of armor, and they think, oh, well, that's the only armor you can get. So AR-500 does make some pretty stout armor, but here we're going to show you some lighter options and the armor industry is actually going towards the route of just everyday people having armor too, mm -hmm. right? So it doesn't matter if you're just simply a student going to school and you just want to be able to have some armor that's a real passive thing, mm -hmm. or if you want to have a light carrier to protect your children uh, in the carriage or something, or if you're out and about, or just have some armor on, on standby that just doesn't look like armor. There's a lot of passive and lightweight options mm -hmm. that don't scream, hey, I've got body armor. So uh, AR-500, <laughs> we got with them and got some stuff out to show you guys. And um, and we want to just show yeah. you guys a few things. I have to talk about the the guy who recently walked into another store or whatever, you know, doing a Second Amendment audit, wearing body armor. I mean, come on, 
Who in their damn right mind would think that it's okay to just walk into a store like that with a full kit on? Like, come on now. People, the, the, especially with the sensitivity of things going on, that oh, wasn't well, a very smart not, idea. Not only that, but I think about open carry and concealed carry, and th this video is, is not focused on that at all, but I carry concealed. I don't want anybody just seeing my firearm on my person. No, I want it to be concealed so that way it's not it's not detrimental to me just going to the store and somebody calling the cops because I have a gun on me, you know, in this day and time. You know, that's that's the general consensus now is oh, if you got a gun on you, you you must mean to do harm. No. It's it's all about public image, you know? Well, this that, isn't the first time they've talked oh, about God, it. Oh god, no, it's okay, not. But so, it's just crazy. so back back when uh, you know, back during Vegas and all of that, uh, it was it was another situation too. I think it might have been maybe the Pulse shooting or something like that. One of the shootings, they, they made this big call for, oh, we need to talk about banning assault clothing. That's what they called it, assault oh, clothing. Oh, God almighty. Like, we're, we're talking not even armor, but they were talking about simple things such as magazine pouches and, and just the appearance of it being scary to them. It makes it assault clothing. Just like a, an AR, because it's black and, and they think it looks scary, it's an assault rifle. Uh, excuse me, sir, you can't wear those boots in here yes, because the, those are yes, assault Yes, those are boots. assault boots. Okay, so <laughs> these are the kind of people that you're dealing with in terms of their mentality. So we're going to talk about a couple of pieces of armor really briefly, and we're going to go from a little bit you know, more down the rabbit hole versus really light, and then uh, we actually are going to be doing a review where we shoot this, this backpack here. And we'll talk about this as we go. So okay. down here on the end, we've got the Veritas. Veritas. So this is more of your traditional um, kind of high-speed carrier, okay? So this has a lot of molly, a lot of Velcro on it, plenty of room for attachments, you know, kind of QD clips. You've got molly on the back, so you can carry multiple mag pouches, med kit, other supplies and things. You can put uh, pouches on here to carry a knife. Flashlight, radios, radios, med kit, you name it. So molly up on the straps. So this is a very more uh, duty ready duty ready tactical style carrier you know this is something that you know you would set up and have as kind of a, a go-to rig if, if you're ever in some sort of you know home defense scenario and you just need to grab and go or keep in your car in case there's something crazy going on whatever the case is or if you're law enforcement military whatever the case is this is the kind of thing that you would probably have in your kit. Now, the plates that we're going to be showing you are soft plates that are level 3A rated, mm -hmm. but obviously you can get their, their anti-spall, you know, AR-500 mm -hmm. armor steel. plates. Yeah, We've tested plates. a bunch of the steel plates in the past. They hold up really well. Oh, yeah. I don't have any of those plates here to physically show you, but well, we, we will be showing <laughs> soft body armor. We've destroyed all the ones that we <laughs> We have destroyed them all, and that's why we don't have them. All right, so, so going next, this one's a little less obtrusive, and we're getting into the Invictus. So this is a little bit lighter weight plate carrier, okay? You've got much thinner material, very much more low profile, but you still have the Velcro options, some really low profile molly for, you know, all of your attachments and stuff, and it's a little bit lighter weight too. Mm -hmm. Not quite as padded, probably wouldn't be as comfortable over time. The straps, you know, are just kind of a thin strap material here, but I mean, this is the kind of thing that me personally, I would have set up at the house just for a grab and go. And this is also the style of armor that you're gonna see people wearing. Like anytime you see a reporter overseas mm -hmm. in a combat zone, or maybe a medic or a firefighter that might be in a combat zone that needs, you know, maybe some, some armor. This is a good lightweight everyday wear, you know, armor you can wear on the job if your you know, job requires it mm -hmm. uh, to cut down a little bit on the weight, especially mm -hmm. if you're not needing to carry all the gear, you just need the protection of the armor. Uh, this is a great way, uh, way to do that. We'll see when like meltdowns and stuff, I could carry extra batteries on this and mm -hmm. you know, lens caps and extra lenses in case I need to switch something on the fly. Yeah, maybe you know? some gel for your maybe, hair. Yeah, you know? maybe some soul glow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, so getting even lighter and we're gonna show you a couple of uh, various things. Uh, we've we got here? the Freeman. All right, this is the Freeman, the Gordon Freeman. The Freeman. So this is like uber lightweight, look at this. I mean, that thing is just meant to carry a single plate on the front and the rear and just be super minimalist, super low profile, and you do still have some molly attachments on there mm -hmm. for some accessorizing. Yep. I mean, that is cool. I, they have got some really, really killer stuff. And like then this is their level 3A armor here. Uh, uh, this is this is made to stop pistol threats mm -hmm. up to 357 SIG pressures, which you know, 357 SIG's got some power. Uh, I would imagine that these things will stop quite a few pistol threats, but that level 3A is, is definitely no joke. Mm -hmm. 
and this is very lightweight 3 8 plate. It is. I mean, you know? we've, we've shot these before, guys, and they do perform quite well. And you can see mm -hmm. this is the same type of, of idea, but just mm -hmm. super, super lightweight. This one's even lighter and with no molly. Yep. See, this Here. one, yep, the 3A. So it'll stop 44 Magnum semi-jack and hollow points uh, with specified mass of 240 grain up to 1,430 feet per second. Yeah. So that's a substantial pistol threat. It is. Now, level 3A won't stop rifle threats. Yeah. Uh, if you want to stop ri a rifle threat, you've got to get up in the level four armor and get up into you know the metal plates with the yeah. anti spalling, or and that's the, where you get into like the trauma pads and things like well, that. Well, you can get too. into the like, ceramic stuff too, or the composites oh, and yeah. all, but <sighs> crazy. Yeah. Okay, so getting on to the, this is the EPC or emergency personal carrier. Now this is super super lightweight. This one is not necessarily designed to be worn. It's really meant to be placed in a in a position. Or you could you could probably wear this. Oh, one it looks like uh in here. Let me see. So it's we were like looking at this that. earlier. So you strap this thing over like this. Uh, it's just meant it. to be like super quick. Yeah, and, and then easy. it's got a strap right here where you could just there you go tie that thing on. And it's just a front plate. Yeah, you don't have rear plates and stuff. This is just more like a, you know, if if you're Say, say you, you got to keep this like uh, hooked around like you, the back seat of your truck or something. Well, yeah, I mean, say you got a, or well, even at the house too. I mean, if you got like a panic room or something like that, or a, you know, say you in some sort of emergency situation, you know, you gather your family up and you go to a designated room. I mean, this is the kind of thing that you could easily drape over your children just to help add that extra layer of protection if somebody's in your house trying to hurt you. Yeah, you know, it's not, it's not that hard, but. People like Chuck Schumer want to ban your ability to use this tool in your own home for your own plan. Or heck, you know, if you've got a, a really young baby yep. uh, in a crib or something, <clears throat> you could drape this over the side of the crib or even drape this, you know, near the baby just Easy. to add a little bit of extra protection if you've got time to prepare. So armor is a passive way to protect yourself. And everybody thinks that armor has to be this thing that's all tactical and everything. We want to show you that there's options that you don't have to go the tactical route. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to be a pro-gun guy or even like guns to have armor. It's one of the most mm -hmm. passive ways you can protect yourself. It's just to simply keep bullets from entering your body, right? So the last thing we want to show is the Firebird Armored Backpack. Now, this is pretty cool. This is neat. You know, I actually didn't know about this until real recently. Well, you got there room you go. for your laptop. And you still got room for all your school yeah. supplies, your laptop. And this is a, a, a very nondescript and non-obtrusive looking kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's not tactical, it's not camo, mm -hmm. and it got you know a whole bunch of molly on the outside of it. It's a very simple, you know, low unobtrusive, low-key yep. kind of thing. And you see that in the industry with not only I hate to use the word tactical clothing. I hate that word. <laughs> I've gotten to the point where I don't even like saying the word tactical, tactical. anymore. But tactical clothing, <laughs> the big thing now is you know, being really nondescript. I mean, like, I really love the Kanai gear. Mm -hmm. uh, the Kanai Pro gear, when you look at their shirts, um, you know, their tops, their range bags, their gun carriers. I mean, all the stuff that, that you know, um, that Kanai makes mm -hmm. is really just good everyday man stuff that doesn't look all tactical, mm -hmm. right? It's just simple, it works, it's tactically minded, but not like have to be ranger operator walking yep. somewhere. So yeah. uh, there's been no bill proposed yet on the body armor ban, hmm. but it's probably important that we keep an eye on it. So mm -hmm. if anything hits uh, that we can you know, report back on, we will, but we wanted to make this video to let you guys know and be aware that Chuck Schumer is rattling sabers when it comes to body armor. And we wanted to show you guys some body armor. <clears throat> Thought it might be a cool opportunity. Remember, if the government, politicians, these people want to restrict your access to the tools necessary, that well, that you deem necessary, whether or not you think you need to own them or not, if you have access to these tools, then you are a citizen in this country. If you don't have access to these tools, then guess what? You wind up being a subject. And I've heard that term used so much in politics recently, it just ticks me off to no avail. We are, what not, we are not subjects. We were subjects under the monarchy before we gained our independence from the British. Yeah. We are citizens of this country, and we deserve all the tools and all the means necessary to defend our way of life and our life and liberty, whether you think so or not, Mr. Schumer. Remember, guys, these politicians, they're civilians. Politicians are civilian, okay? At the end of the day, you are still a civilian. You are a public servant. In fact, when you take on a government role, you're actually lower than a civilian because you've served the people. You, when you raise that hand and you take that oath to protect this, this republic, you are letting the citizens know that 
as a, an elected representative of the people, that you're going to fight for them, that you're going to do the right thing when no one's looking. Sure. And to, and that that you have to lend that service to the people. That service is to the people, not to the higher ups, not to the rich ruling elite, not to all the upper end echelon of the political sphere that you're trying to climb that ladder. Oh yeah, certainly not. Politics yourself. should not be about climbing a ladder or gaining power or obtaining wealth and money. Pol politics should be about looking out for the interest of the people. And that's no longer happening. It seems like it's all a power grab. And these people think, oh, well, I'm, I'm Mr. Important, and I'm all this and that, and I should have protection and armor and guns, and you guys shouldn't. Well, what happened to serving the public, serving the people? You are a public servant. If anything, you're below a citizen. Mm -hmm. Because you, you have, and it's, it's a service. Do you understand what military and public service means? <laughs> that you are taking on a, a very hard and important task mm -hmm. To the service of your country, right? You are serving the people of this country, not yourself. Okay, so really a politician's even lower than just a normal <laughs> citizen because they work for us. They are elected by us to represent us. Yep. And 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 I'm not saying it's a shameful thing. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's nothing to be ashamed to call yourself a public servant. It is a service. You provide it. It's it's no different than serving in the military or serving. You know, as a policeman, you are providing a service, you know, so that people can live the life they want and be free, right? You are serving. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. Yeah, but you're doing a job, a task that their country needs. Well, remember, when these politicians, when they spew all their anti gun and anti freedom and anti liberty nonsense, they want to take away law abiding people's ability to defend themselves. They don't want to do anything for the criminals because guess what? All the laws are on the books. If you're a criminal, you're going to ignore them anyways. Oh, we're going to ban body armor. Well, I don't care. And of course, they don't care about oh, what laws they pass because they're not going to follow. Uh, they don't yeah. have to. They're not subject to oh, them. Well, well, we're going to have this, uh, another assault weapons ban because, you know, reasons. If you, uh, nobody oh, needs but assault all weapons. law enforcement, y'all can keep yours. Yeah, yeah of course. So, <laughs> all right, you think any criminals are going to turn, turn in their assault weapons? I mean, frankly, do you think any civilians are going to turn in their law-abiding people are going to turn in their assault weapons? Assault weapons. Oh, God, I hate that term so much. Do you think that people are going to comply with that crap? You are out of your minds. But you want to restrict law-abiding people's ability to defend themselves and protect themselves and their families? Fine. Kudos to you. But guess what? You are going to be out of there before you even know it. If oh, you yeah. keep this crap up, we we it's, have we have to vote for their feet. Well, it's going to be one of these things like '94. You know, the assault weapons ban in '94 came down the pipeline. Everybody was pissed off, and guess what? It was a big you know upheaval in the Congress. But honestly, these days, I don't put a lot of stock in the Congress. Republicans, Democrats, I don't really care about any of them, to be honest with you, anymore. I find myself, you know, living in liberty, and and that's what I always keep telling people to do: live in liberty. Be you know, live in liberty. Be a free person. And I, I really, you know, kind of look more towards the, the end of, like, the libertarians. Now, uh, I'm not a registered libertarian. I'm not a card-toting libertarian. But I find myself kind of, you know, really just thinking more along the lines of liberty. What would liberty do, right? If, li if Lady Liberty was right here, would she approve? Clearly not. So, I mean, you have to live in liberty and you have to want liberty for other people, too. That's the thing. That's the issue is that people on both sides of the left and right... They want to deprive each other of certain liberties. They don't want to just look at it like, oh, well, we're going to let people on the left do what they want. All right, well, maybe us people on the left, we're going to let people on the right do what they want. No. The left wants to take things away from the right. Mm -hmm. The right wants to, you know, restrict things, restrict that, things yeah. to the left. So, And I think there's a lot of us that just want everybody to get along, and we all just want to live free. And as long as no victim's being created, who cares what you do? There's no crime. There's no crime. So, Anyways. live in liberty, guys. That, that's all I say. So, um, have how yourselves we, a great day. You know? We always get off on these tangents. I, I know. I know we get on the tangents. But, guys, keep an eye on Chuck Schumer <sighs> over this body armor stuff. Ugh, uh, you know, morning. we're not trying to chalk up anything weird in terms of fear. We're just trying to let people know. You know, show you guys some body armor. Talk a little bit about this thing. If we hear anything else <clears> in terms of news that we can report about body armor, we'll let you know uh, if anything gains any traction. But, contact your reps. Complain. You know, it works, guys. You know, let them know. You will vote them out if they support these measures. So um, thank you guys so very much for watching today's video. Sorry we rambled a bit, but sometimes we do this. Um, many more videos on the way. 
Definitely want to take a moment to thank all our Patreon supporters for the support. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, those of you who purchase man cans to support the channel, thank you so much. Uh, if you purchase t-shirts, such as the snazzy one that I'm wearing here, the modern pitchfork, which is quite uh, fitting for today's video. <laughs> uh, all those funds go right back to supporting the channel, so thank you so much uh, for helping us out and believing in what we do and seeing value in what we do. So uh, have a great day, many more videos on the way, and we'll see you next time. Take care, guys.